Good morning, everyone. I hope you are feeling well after yesterday's party. Thank you for coming. Uh, we'll be talking about mobile payment security. Uh, mobile payment security. As you can see, it can be, can be implemented in a secure and a less secure way. Uh, but seriously, we'll be rather not talking about mobile ATMs, but rather about mobile contactless uh, payments. When you, get, when you are using your phone, uh, to pay for your coffee, for your beer, or for a grocery store. So maybe first we'll show you how it works. Okay, uh, so now I have the contactless payment terminal. Uh, I have my mobile phone. Uh, oh, uh, I'll just show you this video <laughs> over there. It will be better. Uh, okay. uh, so this is the terminal? Yeah. Sum up it's terminal. Timed out in the meantime. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll try it again. Um, and now I have the mobile phone. Uh, I'll just try to pay with it. It should work just flawlessly, but you know, live demos. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I should just tap over it and do nothing more. I, I even don't need to enter any pin on my phone. And it just works. Uh, not in this live demo, but in real life. Right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll try to Oops. do it again in a few moments. Let's get uh, back to the static slide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so as you can demos. see, the, it works like that, that you are just tapping your phone, just like a normal plastic contactless card. Uh, to the payment terminal, you are not entering any PIN on the phone and, and on the terminal, and for a small amount, transaction is just accepted. Uh, the only thing that you have to uh, have, to have is to uh, not, uh, not unlock, but to have screen active. The screen should be active to NFC uh, to work, and that's all. So the technology is very convenient, so probably it will be used by the customer on the uh, large scale. But what about uh, nowadays? Is it popular? How many of you have ever used the uh, mobile contactless payments? Okay. Uh, what about normal contactless payment cards? I mean the plastic cards. Okay. So as you can see, probably this technology will be used in the nearby future or even nowadays. And maybe how many of you are protecting such as solutions or developing such as solutions, I mean mobile contactless payments. Not too many, but still. Uh, so, it will be used in the future, uh, definitely. Nowadays, I just managed to, uh, to find a slide from the last year that there is some uh, market research that 55 banks last year has implemented HC technology, uh, mobile payments technology on Android platform. As you can see, the, uh, the most market penetration is on the Far Eastern China and Central Eastern Europe. In Central and Eastern Europe, we are from Poland, we have uh, 16 different banks who already implemented HCE uh, in live systems last year. So if it will be used on the mass scale, probably it, uh, it will be also uh, gather the interest of the potential fraudsters. But Considering the history, uh, I, I have some, uh, found some facts that, for example, five years ago, NatWest Bank has suspended their Get Cash app. Cash, uh, Get Cash was used to uh, um, allow customers to withdraw money only with their phone. They decided to suspend this uh, application due to uh, frauds. Uh, last year, we have uh, seen some news about using Apple Pay platform. Uh, just as a carrier for stolen card data uh, to use the stolen cards uh, data uh, on a brick and mortar uh, shopping. And uh, only, I think uh, it was at the beginning of the May, so just uh, two weeks ago, I saw the news from uh, Sydney police uh, that they uh, arrested two men who uh, were using HCE to make one and a half million in fraudulent purchases. So for me, it's rather present danger. Fraudsters are nowadays interested in these mobile payments uh, technologies. So we decided to research the uh, potential attacks and potential countermeasures uh, against these uh, uh, attacks. 
So, uh, so main parts of our presentation will be a discussion of potential attack scenarios and potential countermeasures that can stop those uh, attacks. So we want to do this uh, presentation a little bit different. It will be like a blue team, red team exercise. And uh, my name is Wojtek Dworakowski. I am a securing CEO. And on this picture, I, picture I am wearing the helmet. So of course, I will be defending side uh, in this exercise. And my name is Sławek Jasek, and I will be on the opposite side. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, but first let's start with a uh, short HC technology in, uh, uh, intro because some of you are using this technology, but probably not everyone knows uh, how this technology is working. So, few facts. First, we'll be talking not about every mobile payment technology because there are multiple solutions on the market nowadays. There are some cardless solutions, but we will be not talking about let's say PayPal wallet, etc. we'll be talking only uh, uh, about card-based solution when the card actually is stored inside your phone. So nowadays we have two different uh, types of implementation. First is based on special hardware, so we call it secure element, uh, uh, when the card data is stored in a special, uh, special hardware, and this is the way that Apple Pay, for example, works. Uh, also, we have uh, some, some kind of uh, solutions based on the SIM card, uh, but it is rather nowadays a matter of history because it's difficult to implement because you have to ha the bank has to have some kind of agreement with the carrier because banks don't own the SIM, so it's difficult from the business perspective. Uh, on an Android platform, of course, Google don't have uh, total control at, uh, at their hardware, yeah, and we have multiple of phones, so Google decided to move to the software. So we have HC, which is host card emulation, and this is the technology that uh, emulates the payment card inside the software. So that's why uh, it is interesting from attacker perspective, of course. And uh, uh, this technology, HC, is used by Android Pay and by, by all banking apps used to uh, mobile payments and third-party apps used to uh, mobile payments. So we'll be talking on only about HC on uh, Android platform. The first question is where card data are actually stored. Uh, so, of course, on secure element, uh, iOS, etc., the card data is stored just in, the, in this special hardware. But what about uh, HC? Uh, in HC, card data are just stored in the uh, application uh, folder, and it is protected by just the Android platform security features. That's all. Uh, the, other, the other thing is the whole the infra infrastructures that, that make uh, the, the payment works. So we have so-called secure element in the cloud. It is the official name in the all vendors documentation. We have a NFC controller and a HC API, which is the part of the Android platform from version 4.4 up. And we have HC applet and this infrastructure secure element in the cloud, which is delivered by the payment vendor like Visa, MasterCard, or third party uh, vendors. So from developer's perspective, uh, developers just, uh, are just seeing the secure in element in the cloud API, uh, and they don't need to understand all the HC mechanics. So it's quite convenient for the developers. Yeah, well, it's, I, I see a kind of problem with this documentation, because uh, this is the, the documentation that the bank gets, how it works. and. Uh, they try to impose that this is some kind of separate entity, and they call it an applet, just like the Java Cut applet that works in Secure Element, and they use the same names. So I noticed that there's somewhere, sometimes there's, it's lost in translation that it's actually an, a library, a software library that's, that becomes part of mobile application. Uh, and stores the data in the same in the same uh, files uh, accessible by this mobile application. Yeah. So most of developers will think that it is secure because we have secure element in the cloud. Uh, but actually, is 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 it not secure? Because, for example, in vendors documentation, we can see that we have so uh, secure environment in the cloud, of course, uh, which is protected by 
two firewalls and the proxy. Well, uh, I will show you in a few minutes that these two firewalls and reverse proxy will not stop me from cloning this card data. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so uh, we decided to research this and we'll show you the potential attacks and potential countermeasures. Uh, well, uh, you probably saw uh, that I didn't need to enter any pin uh, on the phone, so uh, I just need to have physical access to the phone to my payment, so I could just steal it and make the payments, right? <laughs> that's, that's just so easy. <laughs> uh, yes, but uh, considering the, just the stolen phone, the risk is, of course, similar as for normal plastic card, which is can be cloned to and used for contactless payments. And uh, uh, the risk is rather low because such as attacks could be used just for a small scale, because just for a small transaction, because transaction cap for single uh, transaction is only uh, 25 euros, you should steal the whole phone. Uh, and for me, uh, this attack is not too practical because uh, nowadays, how many minutes after the phone was stolen you will notice that you don't have your favorite toy? Well, yeah, you might be right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, there is another attack, very interesting one, uh, that has been around for several years and um, interesting talks about it, that you could just do an NFC relay. So, uh, I will get close to you as a victim and my fellow uh, in crime I will be close to a payment terminal and I will remotely relay the NFC to the payment terminal so I will be able to make the transactions without you even knowing about it. Yes, this attack was well, uh, well, well written and well known, and, but for me it's uh, very interesting, of course, from technical point of view, but again, this attack, attack is not too practical. First, you have to have very close proximity uh, uh, in the same time to the victim and to the payment terminal. And mostly, despite of what media are saying, it will not work through the back or through the wallet. Uh, and then you have a very short window of, of opportunity because you have to, one, one attacker should be very close at the bus, for example, uh, to the victim and the other uh, should be at the same time at the shop making the uh, contactless uh, payments. Uh, then, on Android platform, as you, as you said, uh, NFC works only with a screen turned on. So, th those factors may make this uh, attack really impractical. And, uh, of course, if you, if you are really paranoid, you can use additional countermeasures, like you can enforce screen unlock, uh, or enter the, the or, or uh, enforce user to enter the pin for every transaction, which is, which of course will hurt uh, user experience. But the better solution is to detect communication delays due to proxying. All right. Uh, so, how about stealing car data in transit? You usually have a very complex architecture, and the car data is flowing somewhere there. You must have made a mistake somewhere there, so I could steal it somewhere, sniff it or something, and have it just, well. Yeah, the idea is good, but the problem is that the ca actual car data are never transmitted through the network because of so-called tokenization. Uh, tokenization is a, uh, replace, repl is replacing uh, uh, static uh, personal account number, the card number, with a random number. Uh, just for one use. So this random number is uh, stored inside your phone and is used only for one transaction. And you have only a few so-called tokens, th those virtual card data, uh, card numbers. And uh, a good thing about tokens is that they have a limited use. For example, you cannot use this token data as a card data uh, at ATM. Uh, so that's the tokenization. Well, uh, actually, you are right that um, in this way I cannot steal the original card number and make online payments with it, but actually you have to store on the phone uh, all the keys and card data necessary to make the contactless payment. So that's what I will be after. I will try to steal these keys that make the contactless payment possible. 
So I will be after the keys. Uh, so how do I do it? Well, uh, in order to steal something from Android phone, I could use probably an Android malware. Uh, there is a bunch of them, and uh, they can overlay uh, and trick users into entering pins or something. They can intercept SMSs. I could write a uh, target uh, something to send malicious intents if your application is vulnerable, and so on. So uh, OK, OK. There is uh, uh, Android malware, of course, but uh, the card data is stored in the application directory. And as you know, uh, the one application and the malware cannot reach to the uh, other application uh, data. Well, you actually are right, but how if uh, about that my malware uh, would exploit uh, some Android uh, vulnerabilities in your un unpatched phone and gain the root credentials? Uh, having root credentials, uh, having root access to the, to the phone, uh, there is no sandbox and I have access to all the files and I can steal the called data which is stored in user space, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we are not talking about routing the phone by the user, we are talking about, about malware that uh, gains, gains root access using unpatched phone. Vulnerabilities. Okay, but is uh, routing malware popular nowadays? Well, uh, just take a look at the recent headers. Uh, there, is, there are many examples of malware which uh, routes the phones, and uh, e recently there are millions of, uh, of uh, phones uh, uh, which are uh, infected by this. So uh, it, I believe it is a real risk. So uh, Having uh, malware remote uh, root access to the victim's phone, uh, I could get this, this payment keys which are stored in the user space, right? Uh, okay, but the keys on the Android platform or HC platform are encrypted. Well, yes, well, of course they are encrypted. That's what I would expect, right? So, uh, in order to decrypt them, I could, uh, for example, try to decompile the Android, uh, the, the Android binary, understand how it works, and, and uh, yeah. decrypt it, right? Yeah, we are, but we are talking about high-risk applications, so probably you will see something like this. Uh, the code is us usually heavily obfuscated, and especially when we are talking about reversing the crypto, it's not so easy. Well, it is technically possible, but you are right that uh, doing this for every application uh, would be very tedious. Uh, and I believe uh, that you uh, imagine that I would take uh, my simple tool in order to try to uh, somehow uh, uh, <laughs> break this uh, mechanism, but maybe Maybe there is just a workaround about, around it. <laughs> so how about we take this two steps back and take a look how this encryption actually works. So we know that uh, the, there is uh, no need to enter anything from the user, and there is also a business requirement for this to work in offline. So the keys have to be stored somewhere, somehow, on the device, right? The, the encryption key has to be, uh, for example, somewhere stored in, on the phone, and it may be combined with something hard-coded in the, in the application binary, right? Uh, so, uh, well, there's, there's just no other way. Uh, it has to work like this one. So, you probably uh, already have an idea what to do to clone this. So I will, just, I will just take another phone, install the same application, and just copy all the data to the other phone, right? And this should work. Uh, it will be too simple because uh, the key is uh, bound, is tied to the device. Because you forgot about one fact that there is a third factor considering the encryption key. Because uh, there is also device-specific characteristic which builds the key, the encryption key. All right. Uh, so how about that I buy exactly the same hardware, uh, hardware phone, and I even change the email number uh, so that it's, it's by, by the hardware, it's, it's exactly the same phone, 
and then I copy the data. Well, yes, okay, it, probably it will work, but again, from attacker perspective, it makes this attack not so effective because I have to have multiple phones just for every victim and for every Android phone which the victim might have. So it's not very practical attack on a, on a mass scale. Yeah, well, all right. So let's try to do it on another device. So uh, now uh, let's try to do la the live demo. Uh, Finger crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, you will see what's happening uh, over there. Uh, I have this payment terminal. I may try to make another payment so that you c could uh, see that there is actual a uh, working card in it. Uh, okay. Uh, in the meantime, I will connect to this victim's phone remotely uh, using ADB, but let's assume that I have remote access uh, by, by a malware. Uh, Okay, so I am connected uh, to this phone in the meantime. Uh, ADB saw. Uh, so now I will use my secret uh, root access and I will run a backup script. Um, so Swarag is emulating the malware? Yeah, in the meantime, I will probably be able to pay. Let's try. Uh, no, I didn't work this time again. Oh. Oh. But uh, hopefully we'll work on a cloned one. Uh, I can uh, uh, run the cloning script. Uh, okay, so now it's copying all the relevant data uh, from this mobile phone remotely. Okay, so I will download this data. Uh, it's just a tar. And I have another phone um, which uh, doesn't have Android Pay activated. So on this victim's phone, uh, I can read the card data using, for example, card reader. Uh, okay. uh, so that we can see that there is actually a card. Uh, it will be better visible when I move this. Uh, okay, so when I uh, press the card reader against it, uh, I am able uh, to see the actual card number over there. Uh, uh, this is the tokenized card number, not the real one, so hopefully you won't be able to make transactions using it, <laughs> because this is my real card number. <laughs> and uh, I have another phone, this is the attacker's phone, uh, and when I try to read a card on it uh, using the same technique, uh, the card is not yet activated. I'll open up again. Uh, When I try to read the card from the attacker's phone, it says the Android Pay is not set up. So there is no card in it at this moment. So this is the fresh phone without any card yeah. data. Uh, a different user and so on. So I will connect to this, uh, to this uh, attacker's phone. Uh, ADB disconnect. <laughs> one, one, 
one and two. Okay, uh, I will push the cloned data. Hmm? Oh, sorry. It's not very convenient to write there. So we are uploading whole card data to the fresh form. Yeah. And, and maybe uh, you haven't noticed, but the forms are different. <laughs> Uh, they are not same same platform and same um, same model. Okay, so I will uh, just show to this uh, attacker's phone. Okay, and use my secret root uh, and restore the data. Um, Uh, and I will, I will just need to rebuild this phone. Uh, okay, it should reboot now. But this is the attacker phone, so we can reboot it many times, etc. And I will try to invoke a transaction using it. Hopefully, on the cloned one, it will work. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Terminal, the terminal is not not, it doesn't show the transaction, so probably you have some problem with uh, internet yeah. or the, something <laughs> like that. Uh, I can already scan the card number from it. Oh, the terminal is, is waking up, and I will try to pay. Uh, yeah, well, it didn't work at this moment, not because... Uh, Maybe some kind of interference between yeah. the <laughs> field. Uh, I'll try again. But we have a card data, as you can see on the on the uh, attacker's phone. We can check just if it is, it is the same card as we. Yeah, uh, as I can the read this card uh, uh, using the card reader again uh, on the attacker's phone. Yeah, and uh, this is the exact uh, card number. Uh, I was able to read from the original victim's phone. Uh, we have just a communication problem with the terminal, I suppose, uh, because uh, it didn't work in the original one yeah, also. But, you, but, but as you can see, uh, we were able to copy card data to the other phone, and you have to believe us because we don't have a nowadays work, working uh, uh, payment terminal. Uh, that we can make that normal transaction using this copied. Uh, I'll try card. again. Maybe I will be more lucky this time. Um, but you will just have to believe us. <laughs> we already made a, a demo and published it uh, on the internet. Um, please wait. No. Ah, so we'll get back to the slides. And. Um, so, um, I was able to do the cloning. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work on this payment terminal, but uh, yeah, it's just a, a live demo. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, well, the cloning script was not re really a rocket su surgery. I used just a tar, uh, change owner, and a, a simple script to uh, restore the, uh, the uh, uh, SLinux properties. 
Uh, and uh, well, I actually <coughs> promised not to disclose this uh, this script, but uh, well, uh, let's do uh, just a two second show, and we'll cut it up later. So and you will forgot about the scripts. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, and the restore script uh, well was just also the simple one. So here it was. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I could agree that having uh, root access to the victim phone, you can uh, make just uh, uh, one low-value transaction, but still there are some protections on the system because you, the, we have uh, limits on multiple transactions because you are able only to do one transaction, and we have uh, limits on transaction amounts. Because of this tokenization, uh, it works like this, that inside the uh, phone, uh, there are stored only a few tokens, and each token is limited to 25 euros. So when the user is out of transactions, out of the, those tokens, uh, there is so-called uh, uh, key replenishment process. And key replenishment process is quite secure because it uses so-called split key technique, technique usually, uh, when uh, one key is encrypted with the other key, so effectively, we have two, two keys. One, keys uh, one, one of those keys uh, is uh, trans transmitted through mobile wallet server, which belongs to, let's say, bank, to the issuer. And the other part of the key, the other key, is pushed to uh, Google Cloud Messaging. So it's quite secure. It's quite difficult to intercept those additional tokens and to make more transactions. Uh, in the meantime, I made another transaction, and it was just confirmed. <laughs> so, uh, uh, sorry, you, you <laughs> I couldn't show this to you on this video, but uh, it just worked <laughs> in the meantime. Um, uh, okay, so... Uh, well, after, after that, we can try this with your cards. So yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you don't believe us. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, but having uh, co cloned the uh, original application, uh, I already, I am already able to to uh, in, to, to uh, uh, talk to the mobile wallet server just exactly like the same, uh, like the original user. So the the server cannot tell uh, between attacker and uh, and the original user. So I can get this part, another part which is uh, usually sent via Google Push. Well, I could intercept on the original victim's phone, uh, having still access to it, or I could uh, just try to reroute it to my phone, and I was able to get the push on the on my cloned device uh, without any any problems. The, the Google, I got the Google Post messages on the on the cloned device. Hmm. So uh, I could also make multiple transactions. That, so I could renew these temporary keys on my spoofed device. Mm -hmm. So OK, you can make few low-value transactions from another device. You can also make multiple, but still low-value value transactions uh, using this cloning technique. Uh, because uh, there are so-called uh, floor limit. Each transaction in the contactless payments is limited only to 25 euros by, by the system. Then, when you want to uh, do transaction above this floor limit, you have to enter the PIN. And PIN usually is entered on the terminal. And terminal, of course, is payment terminal is external uh, to the phone, so it's impossible to hijack this uh, PIN. Well, uh, but uh, how do you actually set up this PIN? Well, uh, as a result of business requirement, it's quite often uh, that uh, the whole enrollment of the new mobile contactless payment card has to be online uh, and using mobile application. So uh, when you set up uh, the new card, you also set up the PIN in the mobile application. So, of course, having malware on this mobile phone, I could also intercept this PIN. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is possible, but of course you have a very short window of op opportunity because you have to have this uh, root malware on the victim phone during the fin pin setup process. Well, yes, but I could also trick the user later into entering the pin during the transaction by having overlay over it or, or just uh, a pop-up that uh, now you, can, you have to change the pin. So the user could be tricked into entering pin 
because he entered it before in the mobile application. It's not something strange. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is also another very interesting from the attacker's perspective technology. It's called CDCVM. So uh, I will just show you how it works. Uh, this is the transaction over the 25 euro, and you watch carefully where do you enter the pin. So the pin is actually entered on the mobile phone. The mobile phone uh, authorizes these transactions and uh, tells the terminal that this transaction is authorized, and the terminal doesn't need to ask for the pin anymore. Mm -hmm. well, I can agree that CDCVM is really crazy technology because you are entering the pin on the mobile device, on the untrusted part of the system. Yeah, but. Uh, now the CDCVM technique is not very common. Uh, we just checked that only 20% of current payment apps uh, supports CDCVM. So what if application does not support CDCVM? Well, uh, if your application does not CD support CDCVM, your HCE library that you, that you implemented in may support it because uh, it has this functionality already, you just don't use it. So, uh, and, and the API names cannot be obfuscated, so I can say API names like set CVM verification mode to true and set CVM verified to true. So I could, uh, for example, patch the application to always tell uh, the terminal that the, uh, that the transaction is authorized and the terminal will not ask for the pin anymore, right? Mm. Uh, so in this way, uh, I could probably make uh, transactions on higher amounts uh, above this 25 euro flow limit. Okay, so I could agree that it is, uh, this uh, cloning te technique is a uh, clear and present danger when you are considering that uh, the attacker could have a root on your phone using the malware. So how can we protect against uh, such as attacks? The one thing I want you to remember that there is no silver bullet. There is no single solutions that will protect such as application, I mean HCE payments against cloning attacks. So we have to use many different layers of security, many different solutions to make attack ineffective or not to be the last one, the last bank that will be constantly attacked. So let's go through the possible solutions. First is a root detection. Nowadays, we have multiple techniques to, to, that we can use uh, when you want to detect if there is a root on the, uh, on, the, on the phone, if the user rooted or malware has rooted. The most effective probably for, from the uh, developer perspective is just to use the uh, Google safety net. In, uh, there is so-called Google safety net. It's a special system with a so-called attestation API. It works like uh, quite simple because it examines software and hardware on your phone. Uh, it creates special profile. The profile is then compared in the cloud with a, a database of well-known devices. And if, and if there is some kind of differences, it can detect that the phone was rooted, that there is potential malware, uh, etc. So it detects routing by customer, they, they will detect custom ROM and uh, also low-level malware. And if you don't want to be bound by the Google solutions, you can also uh, use, uh, for example, Rootbeer. And Rootbeer is an uh, open source implementation, free, free to use. Uh, yeah, but um, you kind of should know that uh, if I have a root access to the victim's phone, I always will be able to hide uh, be, uh, to hide uh, from the root detection techniques, and it's, it's this kind of cat and mouse game. Uh, because it's so, client side. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, uh, you spoke about safety net. Uh, Android Pay, which I just cloned, uses safety net and checks if the phone is rooted. I had root access to this phone. And this is the way the safety net checks for super user binary. So uh, instead of using SU, I just use my initials SJ. You may have probably noticed that. And they didn't, uh, didn't see that the phone is rooted. Uh, so yeah, so it's by bypassable. Uh, the another technique that you can uh, use as a countermeasure is to use device characteristics 
as a part of the key uh, during the encryption. Uh, as you can remember, there is a, uh, three parts of the key, and one of the parts is device-specific characteristic. So characteristics. So we can we can use uh, different characteristics like Android ID or device ID, or phone number or manufacturer and model uh, to build this uh, key. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, you have to know that uh, as an attacker on my uh, phone, I can. Uh, change these characteristics using, for example, Exposed Framework, uh, which allows me to uh, affect uh, the uh, API calls uh, by the mobile application, and it returns just different uh, values, for example, changed by me, or uh, th the same values as the on the original device. So uh, having all the device, I can just spoof the original device characteristics using using uh, such kind of tools. So, so using exposed framework, you can just mimic the uh, device. Yeah, well, and and this uh, countermeasure, the security mechanism, I just I just uh, can. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 not a, a problem for me anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we can do is to check more device characteristic. Of course, it is not super universal technique, but we can also check, for example, device serial, uh, SIM serial, or just the physical characteristic of the phone. Uh, display size, CPU, sensors, because it's constant in the time. It's not, don't, uh, uh, a user is not able to change the display CPU or sensors. So we can also build, build the key uh, using this uh, additional characteristic, and this is the proper measure against yeah, such well, attacks. Yeah, well, I could also spoof them, but it would require more work from me. Yeah. Right. Uh, but uh, the, the other solutions is, for example, to use, uh, <laughs> to uh, take into the consideration uh, integrity protection. Because uh, as you can, uh, you can see, there is some techniques that involves the manipulating with the app. For example, this CDCVM patching, etc. So w what we can use is to uh, involve more and more integrity protection in our app. For example, use heavy uh, code obfuscation, uh, check the install source, signing keys, uh, etc. to make it difficult to modify the application. Uh, and uh, on the server side, we should also improve fraud detection, uh, which is probably the good way to go against these uh, attacks. Uh, so what we can do to improve fraud detection? First, we can use some kind of device scoring. For example, if, if we will notice that uh, the customer has uh, uh, outdated Android without current patches, uh, or they uh, have a bootloader unlocked or rooted the phone, etc., it makes this device more risky. So it, it should some kind influence our fraud, de fraud detection system. Then we can also have a behavioral analysis to detect just a kill chain which makes this uh, clone transaction possible. And finally, we should use general countermeasures for financial app, like, for example, special business rules th that we can have on a bank side, not only on the payment side, uh, transaction limits, for example, make it a little bit higher than just the 25 euros, but let's say 100 uh, euros or something like that, which is the hard limit in enforced on the uh, bank side. We can also have uh, notifications that the user is notified that in the short amount of time, a lot of money just were transferred. Yeah, well, you just need to remember that uh, I have access to uh, his phone. I can also intercept this notification and yeah. just... Uh, just uh, exactly. uh, do not follow up. And uh, we, can, uh, we should also use uh, application security good practices, especially we should disable uh, uh, unused uh, methods inside the APIs. Uh, we should secure interfaces for other applications, and we should ensure that there is no information leakage in logs, etc. That's a common for all applications, but it, will, it should be especially used in this uh, financial uh, mobile payment applications. So, as a summary, there is no silver bullet. You have to use many, many uh, defense options to increase the uh, security to, and to make attacks uh, ineffective. We will be writing the white paper about the potential countermeasures, so contact us if it is an uh, important topic for you. But we also have 
uh, did some, some kind of research, research if these countermeasures are actually used nowadays. Uh, so we have tested nine different implementations of HCE, uh, Android Pay, and eight different implementations, eight different apps provided by banks. And here are the results. We were 100% effective in cloning the uh, cards and make the payments. So probably most of current implementations aren't using these additional solutions to protect the, uh, against the cloning. Yeah, well, for the easiest one, uh, there was no root detection even. Uh, the, the very simple device check, so I just needed to change the build prop file. I uh, didn't need to spoof anything, and the, and the push for replenishment wasn't via Google Cloud, so I could just send a simple uh, uh, REST API request to the banking server and got the new keys. Uh, on the other side, the, the hardest one had a very good, uh, checked a lot of device characteristics, so I needed to use Expose Framework uh, to meet, mimic the original device, uh, but at the same time they had a very good root detection and I wasn't uh, really easily able to hide this exposed framework, so I ended, ended up in uh, cloning on the same physical device, uh, and that worked uh, as a proof of concept, but uh, was much more difficult to, to perform. So uh, as an attacker, I would probably uh, leave this application alone and move to another target. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, that's all. Uh, so please use these additional countermeasures when you are building such a solution, mobile payment so solutions. Uh, if you are interested in this topic, uh, you can contact us using Twitter or email. Uh, and uh, there is also HC cloning FAQ on our website. And so, I still hope I will be able to provide you the live demo if you, are, if you will stay, so <laughs> I will try it again. <laughs> so meantime, maybe you have uh, questions. One guy over there, I think. Yeah, maybe this is the metallic thing. <laughs> I cannot hear you, sorry. Given that there's a dependence on installing malware on the Android phone, um, obviously, if you have physical access, then it's pretty much game over in that respect. But have you any sort of worked examples of how to actually get that malware on the phone? For instance, maybe backdooring a legitimate app with something like a Drozer agent and then being able to attack it remotely. Have you done any work in that area? Uh, not really. Uh, so we have uh, now examples of working uh, Android malware with root access. There are plenty of them, I think. Does it specifically require the victim device to be rooted? Or no, just no, no, no. We have to emphasize that the routing, uh, routing is not uh, routing by the user, but by the malware. So malware is uh, just utilizing the well-known uh, Android uh, bugs to gain the root access. So the risk is for all users, not only for these users who are rooted their phone by purpose. Any other questions at all? Okay. Okay, so thank you. Oh, one more question, sorry. Uh, sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, can, I, can I just ask first? Uh, uh -huh. Did you find any sensitive information like identity Yeah, well, uh, they do store uh, the temporary keys mostly. Um, sometimes they store uh, uh, a few digits of the original card, and uh, sometimes they store. Uh, 
transactions uh, that were made and something like that. Uh, but this is all encrypted. Uh, and uh, in a few cases, we did the uh, decryption thing. Uh, we, we reversed the, uh, the encryption algorithm and so on. Uh, but uh, for our attack on the other cases, in order to make the proof of concept that the cloning is possible, I just used this workaround. Uh, I just didn't need to, uh, to make this uh, uh, reversing. I just copied, copied the data on, on the mm -hmm. spoofed device. Yeah. Actually, you don't have a sensitive data on the... You shouldn't have uh, sensitive data on the phone because of tokenization. Token just uh, that it works like one-time uh, credit card numbers and the encryption. Yep. Uh, so of those nine apps that uh, you successfully cloned, is, uh, is there a list available of those that you cloned? And did, did you, they fix it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> did they fix that? <laughs> no. uh, actually, we are showing that it is not uh, vulnerabilities by itself. It's a rather lack of protection nowadays. But nowadays, uh, probably not many banks con are considered uh, the root, routing malware as a current threat. So that's the, that's the problem. Yeah, well, we made this as a proof of concept because uh, we noticed that uh, our clients, our uh, in, yeah. in banks, uh, believe that it's impossible. The, the first, actually, the first cloning, the, the idea of this research was from one of our customers because we were testing HCE solutions for them. And they, uh, they uh, tried to convince their own developers that it is uh, possible to clone card data because developers insisted that it is not possible because it's a secure element in the cloud and it is not possible. So we have showed the proof of concept that it is possible <laughs> yeah. as an A opener. Okay, so thank you.